there it is, a small atoll of coral islands in the Pacific, where man is dedicated to just one cause, the conquest of space. Here below us, a small city has been created to house the scientists, engineers, and technicians on whose shoulders rests the tremendous responsibility for this great adventure. This is the rocket assembly building with tracks running to the launching site. Only 48 hours remain until firing time. Our spaceship moves ponderously toward the firing site. After the ship is securely anchored over the blast tunnel, the elevator spar is raised into place for the final pre-flight check and fueling. This is the blockhouse, the control center for Operation Space Flight. Here, the oscilloscopes, radar scopes, computers, and tracking devices are the brain and nervous system for the rocket. Dancing patterns of light will record every detail of the blast off and climb into space. In the windowless blockhouse, observation is by periscope. Through a system of worldwide radar stations, Electronic eyes will always be focused on the rocket as it orbits around the globe every two hours. The tracking radars report ready and are standing by. The optical tracking stations are poised and ready to follow the rocket in its upward flight. As zero hour approaches, the painstaking work of the checkout crew continues. The ship and every piece of its equipment is being checked and rechecked. Blockhouse, can you hear me? Will you give me that stage two separation signal again? Okay now, over. Now swivel motor stage three to pitch right. Okay now, give me the left. Attention all personnel. It is now X minus two hours. Fueling crew, take your stations. Safety area will be cleared by all personnel. In the pits, the required quantity of fuel is preset. The pumps will deliver 1,230 tons of hydrazine and red fuming nitric acid into the tanks of the waiting rocket. It is now X minus 20 minutes. Flight crew, report aboard rocket. Flight crew, report aboard rocket. After years of careful preparation, testing men and materials, this is the final payoff. Now man will bet his life against the unknown dangers of space travel. Human reactions are not precise enough. Therefore, once the launching timer is started, the entire takeoff and flight into outer space will be controlled automatically. X minus five minutes. Clear the firing area. Clear the firing area. X minus 90 seconds. X minus 30 seconds. X minus 20 seconds. X minus 15 seconds. X minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
total firing time has been five minutes. The ship will now coast for 51 minutes before the adaptation maneuver begins. At over 60 miles above the Earth, the crew members experience the sensation of weightlessness for the first time. Blockhouse to XR-1. Your cutoff altitude is 63.9 miles. Distance from launching pad, 705 miles. Velocity, 18,467 miles per hour. Angle of elevation, four minutes of arc. Plane of your ellipse of ascent, incline, 66 degrees, 32 minutes, two seconds to plane of equator. Out. 51 minutes later and halfway around the world, the rocket is coasted to its maximum altitude of 1,075 miles. Its speed has diminished to 14,770 miles per hour. The navigator must now take a bearing on two fixed stars. He will line up the ship for the adaptation maneuver, which will drive it into a circular orbit around the Earth. The electronic controls will fire the rocket motor at the exact second the ship reaches the proper position. The ship and crew are now coasting freely and silently through space. Here, man is no longer earthbound. From his new vantage point of over 1,000 miles high, he sees the Earth as a vast rolling sphere, upon which the oceans and continents are reduced to simple patterns of light and dark. Great cloud formations will appear as small patches of snow. Evidence of man's existence is almost invisible. Large cities can be seen only with the aid of powerful optical equipment. Meteorologists will make studies for long-range weather forecasting. The science of astrophysics will welcome the clear views of our moon and planets, unhampered by atmospheric disturbances. Space medicine will benefit from tests conducted with new type spacesuits. Air Force Kirkland v. Facebook calling XR-1. But we have you in radar contact at 107 miles to south of station at 29. Estimate you at Prestwick Station Delta at 37. Tests and observations by the crew will lay the groundwork for the future construction of a space station and will add to our knowledge of many sciences. rocket approaching from three o'clock high. At a pre-calculated time, the rocket's path will cross that of the instrument carrier, sent into space a few years before. <laughs> 22 hours after takeoff, our spaceship has made 11 revolutions around the world. It is now time to make the return trip. The engineer releases the third stage. It'll be left circling in space. All tests are now concluded. The navigator checks the ship's position for return firing. One minute to go. The automatic firing timer is set. The ship is lined up, so the blast of the motor will be against its forward motion. This will slow the rocket's speed and cause it to begin its long glide back to Earth. The ship is now moving 1,000 miles per hour slower. After coasting halfway around the world, the rocket will leave the vacuum of space and sweep into the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere, where air friction will gradually reduce the rocket's speed. When the ship drops to an altitude of 50 miles, air pressure will build up on the control surfaces. For the first time in the entire flight, the captain will be able to fly the rocket as a normal plane. Air friction begins to send the skin temperature of the rocket climbing until the ship glows cherry red at 1,350 degrees. The double hull and refrigeration keep the crew from perishing. The returning rocket continues the long glide down into the lower atmosphere, its temperature gradually dropping to normal as air speed diminishes.
Mission completed. Man has taken his first great stride forward in the conquest of space. His next goal will be the exploration of the moon, then the planets, and the infinite universe beyond. Thank <laughs> you.